Located on the scenic Hudson River Valley, Kingston, New York was first settled by the Dutch in the year 1651, until it was burned to the ground by the British in the Battle of Saratoga. Many generations since then, you can find a flourishing community of artists in the area, one of them being Keegan Ailes. Let's go explore the key to what makes Keegan Ailes. I'm Tommy Keegan, I'm the owner, founder, brewmaster, just got done cleaning the windows. Uh, do a lot around here, we all wear many hats. I thought I was gonna have a career in genetics and was looking for graduate schools and I was, at the same time I was home brewing as a hobby and found a master's in brewing science. At the same time, there's a small brewery called the Blue Point Brewing Company on Long Island. I would go down there every weekend and beg for a job and the owner was the brewer then. Eventually that company grew big enough that they needed a, a real salary brewer, so they offered me that position. For eight years I was a mainline technician for the cable company. I started home brewing just out of sheer boredom at home, and uh, there was a commercial, and the gentleman said on the commercial, if you can uh, make tea, you can make beer. So my wife is a uh, first uh, generation Irish, so tea is a very big part of our household. So that night I instantly went ahead and just started buying all different types of kits. My first beer I actually brewed was uh, an Oktoberfest. I, I never knew October was spelled with a K. This was before I had any knowledge of brewing. So after that, once I realized how, how vast the world was, I started immersing myself deeper and deeper into it until my wife finished her master's and I decided to go to school for brewing. My aunt told me about this building that nobody would buy because there was an old brewery stuck in it. So this building was built Sometime prior to 1830, Kingston City Records go back to 1830, but it was built as a foundry. It was called the Ulster Foundry. And they did a lot of work for the city, a lot of sewer covers. I have a couple of old sewer covers that were actually made here from the city. And it became um, the Woodstock Brewery in about, I think he started officially in, eight, in 1989, opened for business in 1990, and ran for most of the 90s, till just about 2000. And that, building sat dead for a couple of years. So I came in, struck a deal with the city because they had a lot of equity in the equipment. They had given the Woodstock Brewing Company some municipal loan, that didn't work. So when they went bankrupt, the city got stuck with all this brewery equipment. So I started uh, sort of literally taking my vacation days to go work at the Gilded Otter, which was a very big pull with my wife. But took vacation days to go work for a, a burger and to learn how to make beer. Shortly after that, I did a service call for a micro distillery that was just starting up in uh, Gardner, New York. Uh, after having a brief discussion with the owner, um, I asked to actually just come watch the operations for a day and uh, he offered me a job right on the spot. So it was kind of like the easiest interview I've ever had. And I spent uh, two years uh, learning distilling and controlling, uh, learning their fermentation cycles and everything. So they were actually buying their grain from uh, Tommy, so Tommy would order the grain on top of the grain load for the brewery and they would come and pick it up. So once we had like a dialogue with each other, I literally just kept calling Tommy every day. And sure enough, there was uh, one summer where I was about to take vacation, called Tommy and I was like, any openings yet? And he told me he can, I can start working yesterday. So sure enough, I called my wife and told her two things. One that, uh, Good news was I got a job at a brewery and the bad news was we weren't going on vacation because I had to start working at the brewery. And uh, slowly but surely, three years you know, down the line, I worked my way up and now I'm running the shop. So I'm spot checking, just looking for uh, clarity, carbonation, aroma, and flavors. So right there, that's exactly what I want. Nice carbonating bubbles coming up, a head that forms by itself, and then the fun part, smelling and tasting your wares. It's a hard job, but somebody's gotta do it, you know? Beer number one was beer number one, two, and three. Old Capital, Hurricane Kitty, and Mother's Milk all were released on the same day. I officially started Keegan Ales in January of 2003. I got the keys, believe it or not, on April Fool's Day of 2003 and started cleaning this place up. By September 1st, I had all three beers ready to roll. We just knocked all three of those out. There was a beer competition up at Hunter Mountain, so we brought the first kegs 
ever out of Keegan Nails to that competition just to see what would happen. We didn't know, you know. Mother's Milk won gold and Old Capital won People's Choice Best of Show that day. So I was like, okay, I guess those are my recipes. I won't screw with those too much. And Hurricane Kitty was always a set recipe from the start because it's named after his mother, my grandmother. It's kind of the family beer now. She got the nickname from the cops in the 60s. She got so many tickets from the police that the, the police started calling her Hurricane Kitty back in the 60s. So we figured any chick that we're related to that's cool enough to get a nickname from the cops deserves a beer named after her. She comes like hobbling in and, you know, I got like 25-year-old rugby players like, sign my t-shirt, you know? It's like, like she's like a little local here. The band will be like playing in the middle of the song and it's like, Hurricane Kitty's in the house, you know? And everybody cheers and she like blushes and kind of like shuffles off to the bar. It's cute. Three, two, one, four. Ooh, that's perfect. I think he's got me. <laughs> that's pretty. We <laughs> touch that up a bit. <laughs> yeah, had to do it in two shots. Nice. Good shot. Ooh. Mike won, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think he did too. Yeah. I hate to admit it. Pressure. <laughs> 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 right. It's a hard industry to work in because. It's almost like it's any, especially when you're doing special events and beer festivals, uh, you're essentially at a party and you want to make everyone have a good time, but there's got to be a line to where you're not the one party and you're actually working. And some people just can't handle it. That's probably the toughest part of working in the beer industry, I think. Brewing is just like anything, it's like an art form. So it's like seeing that someone appreciates your art and that you're allowed to like share it with others, it's uh, deeply rewarding. I know a lot of home brewers that they get into it and they're like, ah, well, I want to make a, and they always want to make crazy beers. I want to make a Baltic porter, and they make a Baltic porter, and it's like, yeah, I didn't really like that, so now I'm going to go make a Hefeweizen. Then they make a Hefeweizen, and they're like, eh, that wasn't really a great Hefeweizen, so I'm going to make a, you know, whatever, some kind of crazy alt beer or something. Whatever kind of beer you like to make, just nail that recipe. You're never going to get it right. It's like anything in life, you know? You're never going to get it right the first time. Just keep doing it. You don't have to think about it when you're making it. It always comes out exactly the same way you like it, and it's done, done, done. And then pick another recipe and do that and add to it, you know, add to your repertoire that way. People that are home brewers that want to be professional brewers, I say go to business school. <laughs> don't worry about making beer. You already know how to make beer. That shit'll work itself out. I got into this business because I love making beer, but what I have to do every day to live this dream is um, keep the damn lights on. Whenever anybody tells me they want to start a brewery, I'm like, go get an MBA in finance. That's the best advice I could give you. They all want to hear, you know, uh, you know, go to Europe and tool around Germany and go to Oktoberfest, and you'll be come back and you'll be ready to go. It's like, you don't need to go to Oktoberfest. You need to go to community college and take accounting 101. If you're enjoying the rich history, sights and sounds of Kingston, New York, don't be shy. Stop by Keegan Ales. And if it's Thursday, that's $2 mason jar night. Thanks for watching The Brewery Show. I'll see you guys later. If you're a brewery, or you have a favorite brewery you like to go to, let us know. Drop us a line at brew at overcrestmedia.com. Delicious.